We welcome you to the first portion of our South Carolina post-game press conference. Coach Staley is still occupied, so we're going to go ahead and take some questions for the Gamecock student athletes, and then we'll bring up Coach Staley once we're done with this part of our session. Please silence your cell phones now, and a reminder that shooting video during our post-game press conferences is prohibited. I'm joined on the podium by two Gamecock student athletes, Makia Herbert Harrigan and Bree Beal. When you are asking a question of the student athletes, please direct her by name or ask her by name so that we know who you're talking to. We have assistants on both sides of the room. Just raise your hand. They will bring a microphone to you and please state your name and media affiliation. And with that, let's begin. Josh Hybers, Prison Feathers. Kiki, uh, just how does it feel to be an SEC champ? And uh, what makes this team different than the other SEC championship teams you've been a part of? I mean, it feels great. Um, it's just really fun out there playing with these group of girls. We have a lot of fun together, you know, playing, so that makes it 100 times better, you know? So it just feels great. Pete Yacovelli, Associated Press. Uh, Kiki, do you like the nickname Mad Kiki? And it looked like you got a little mad out there today. Did that, does that emotion help fuel your game? Yes, uh, that emotion does help to fuel my game, um, so. Yeah, and I do like the name, Mad Kiki. <laughs> Bria Felician, High Post Hoops. This is uh, for you, Kiki. How do you think um, you and Ty's leadership styles and personalities complement each other? Um, I feel like it complements each other well. You know, uh, me and Ty, you know, coming to this year, we knew we had a, you know, a young group coming in. So just to try to lead them and be there for them and stuff like that on the court. And that's what we've been doing. Bree, uh, you talked before the season about winning championships. Uh, I know this is not the ultimate one, but how does it feel to be an SEC champion, and how did it meet your expectations? I think for a freshman, I really didn't know what to expect. So just to be able to you know, see the outcome of like all the hard work we put in with each other, it's just crazy, and it's surreal. What were you feeling in that first quarter? I think you had four points and six rebounds in the first five minutes. I think we all individually, we knew like our roles, what we had to do. So when I went out there, I know I had to lock in on defense and lock in on rebounds. Bria, uh, the first game with them this year was really tight. You guys had to come back in the fourth quarter. How did you get out so quickly against them this time and keep them at bay? I think with the last game, we look back, it's just a lot of adjustments that we had to make uh, for one another, who we had to guard, who's going to guard who, how we should guard them. So it's the little things like that that helped us gain that lead early in the game. Coach Daly, would you like to join us, please? <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Do we have any more questions for Bree and Kiki? Ladies, thank you. Congratulations on your championship. Thank you. Thank you. They represented you well, Coach. Of course. They were great. Oh, were they? Okay. Yeah, no question. Hey, Coach. He gets nervous up here. Solid, Kiki. Senior <laughs> leadership once again. Let's open up the floor now for questions for Coach Staley. <coughs> Don. Don, you said the other day that uh, – down front uh, – that you only like big hardware. How does this hardware uh, meet your expectations and uh, how in place is this team uh, to win another one maybe in a couple of weeks? Oh, I mean, I'm happy for our, our players. I mean, they've worked hard. <clears throat> I'm happy for our fans um, who work equally as hard. Um, <clears throat> coming into this building all weekend long, spending their hard earned money um, and I'm, I hope it's worth it. I hope, you know, whatever they had to dish out was worth it with uh, the excitement they brought in the building and they allowed us to, you know, to win this championship. And I'm always proud to represent this, this conference in this way um, because of the great coaches that are in it, the great players. I mean, we're, we're talented. I mean, our, our league is talented and we'll be talented, you know, for the near future. Um, but when you win this league, when you win this tournament, it puts you in a position of competing 
um, on a broader scale, and that's competing for a national championship. So um, that's what we'll try to do in the next phase of our, our season. Coach, we have some water for you if you'd like. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> Donna, you, you, you've uh, credited this team's chemistry all year long and how together they are. How do you keep this kind of dominant performance, this kind of attitude through the next 12 days before you start the big tournament? I mean, rest. I mean, rest is important. I mean, it's, it's hard to stay on like we've had to be um, over the past couple of months. Um, we mixed in just days off. I mean, we took a couple at the earlier um, in the week that put us in a position to just have enough stamina along with our depth. Um, so we'll take a few days off of this spring break so they'll enjoy themselves. You know, we'll reconvene uh, at, the, at the end of the week and, and we'll take it from there. But this team has really been focused when it was time to focus. And they also are focused, um, unfocused from a basketball standpoint when it's time to be unfocused. They will be unfocused for the next few days, and, and rightfully so. They need to decompress a little bit. And is there any doubt in your mind that you are the number one overall seed for the NCAA tournament? Um, th there wasn't a doubt. Win, lose, or draw this tournament, there wasn't a doubt. I don't think anybody has the, um, the resume that we have. Um, but this is the way you, you, you take that out of the question. I don't know what scenarios they could come up with. I mean. There's none that will fit the profile that we that we had, and all the all the you know all the <clears throat> all the things the committee deemed um, necessary for a team to be a number one seed and a number one overall seed. I think we check off the, all the boxes. Yeah, a common statement throughout the season from opposing coaches was that this is your best team in your time at South Carolina. Uh, what do you think would lead opposing coaches to say that? And what are some of the char the best characteristics about this team that you know stand out above <clears throat> the eleven others? I mean, it's a good team. I mean, it's a good chemistry team, good team that competes on both sides of the ball. It's a team that doesn't like losing, doesn't like not losing. I'm not talking games or plays, inches. You know, if you create an advantage, they want to fight to, you know, gain that advantage back. Um, I mean, I think we're, you know, we're, we're good on both sides of the ball. Um, the things that we – I said this yesterday, things we aren't good at, we make up for it. Um, with what, what we're able to do on, on both sides of the basketball. Um, but overall, I mean, we got great leaders, we got great followers, we got great talent, um, and they seem to just gel all season long. Uh, John, what, what has been able to be the difference with this, with this team since being able to arrive on campus early on in the year? How have they been able to grow to get to this point? I mean, I, I'm not going to say they came in egoless because the ego is the thing that keeps them motivated and, and wanting to be the best. Um, they just came in with a want to win, and they really they don't care how that looks for them. They don't care. I mean, Aaliyah Boston, come on. I mean, we got her the ball three, four times tonight. No complaints. She just kept gobbling up rebounds, outletting it, um, blocking shots, running the floor. I mean, it is it is that. I, I thought um, our leaders, I thought Kiki had a great tournament. Just incredible focus um, on her part. And um, and I was happy, you know, because, you know, we can go back a few months when she said, you know, this isn't the place she wants to be. This place doesn't make her happy. And I did make sure I, I got to her after the, after the game. And I just said, Kiki, and I know you didn't envision this, um, a few months ago, she said, she said, I didn't, but now I'm a believer. So, and that's, you know, sometimes kids are, you know, they don't, they don't operate on faith. <laughs> they, they operate on the know, the tangible thing that's in front of them. And it's our job to paint that picture of, of what, is, what it should look like. Um, her commitment to herself, this team, um, you know, allow her to, you know, to be the, the MVP of this tournament. And that's huge. Don, uh, how were you guys able to make the adjustments from that January game you played with these guys? Mm -hmm. I mean, because Mississippi State, still one of the best teams in the country, and that game comes down to the end, and this one you had in control pretty much uh, from the start. I mean, I, I would just say that we, we have open dialogue with our players. Last night, I mean, it's 10 o'clock. 
10 o'clock at night, we're going over our scouting report with our players. And and we just, you know, I asked Ty, Ty, how you want to play this? How you want to play the, the, the weave? How you want to play them? And she was like, we need to zone them. And, and it's Coach Fred's uh, scout. And he talked about zoning them um, before they before they got in the room. And I'm just like, you know, you hear it once, you're like, ah, you hear it twice from a player. Um, then you just you just kind of formulating. And I and although we didn't play a whole whole lot of um, zone, we we created zone concepts within our man. Um, and that was, you know, what got us, you know, got them under control because they weren't you know, having their way with dribble, that dribble drives down the lane. Um, so our commitment to that is it's that type of team where we have very little practice and we just talked about things and they can, they can see it. Um, and, you know, when you have a team like that, that can visualize it and see it without having to have, you know, 100 reps and a lot of prep time. So that's, that's probably the difference maker in, in – teams of, of, of our past and, and this present team, that they, they just have a better understanding of how to play the game. Richmond Weaver, WCCP, and Rich Take on Sports podcast. Uh, Coach Staley, there in the second quarter, things got a little testy. And with the younger team now getting ready for the bigger stage of the NCAA tournament, how do you stress the importance of being able to play with emotional but not getting emotional? I mean, that's that's really almost the first time that it got to that point. And if Aaliyah's involved in it, <laughs> you, you don't really have to worry about any confrontation because she did say she picked the wrong one. And I'm thinking she picked the wrong one, meaning I'm going to stand up for myself. But she meant I don't want any parts of that. I just want to play basketball. But then it comes Kiki, who she wants all the smoke. She wants it all. You know, but, you know, you know, for us, it is, I think Kiki has a real good understanding of, you know, how she needs to play and what needs to get done. And and we've been through that, like, three years ago with Kiki. She's the only question mark uh, when it comes to that. But she's got it under, under control. Um, you know, so we just explain to her what she means to our team. You know, we lose her. We lose a big part of what we do and who we are. Do we have any more questions? Okay. All right, Coach Daly, now you're 5-0 and in the SEC tournament finals, and every win has been double-digit win. So what are you telling your team to be able to have them perform at such a high level in these big games? I mean, you, you really don't have to say much to our team. I mean, they just know what they have to do. You know, when we prep for Arkansas, again, we were up. You know, we, we had our film session. We, we, we really didn't have to go over as detailed as we usually do because they just knew. They, they study the game. They watch our opponents outside of us. So they, they cut our work in half as far as discussion. They knew how we wanted to play. We asked them, okay, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? And everybody had a, an answer. So, you know, that's how you know, that's how you know when a team is ready. And again, you don't have much prep time. We had, we played at 12 o'clock. Um, not much prep time. We played 12 the next day. Not much prep time. No 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 um, shoot around. And you you just you just know. It's that feeling that you know that your team is is ready to go. Bria Felici and High Post Hoops. It's been you and Coach Schaefer for is it four of the last five, five out of the last six, and. Mississippi State, South Carolina, the top two SEC teams that's going the furthest in the tournament for the last few years. What kind of investment from the university level does it take to build, help the, the coaches and the staff build the programs in the way that you have in the last, like, over the last decade? Um, I mean, you, you have to have administrators who really, you know, don't really get in your way. They provide, you know. we. We're, we're provided whatever we need um, to land the top recruits in the country. Whether we deliver on that each year, you know, it's, it's on us. Um, but, you know, we, we, we feel like we're, we get everything that we need to get what we, what we need to get done. Um, I think what's, what's happened for us, just aside from a 
you know, a um, administrative standpoint. It's our, our fans, the way we are able to create a, a home court advantage. Um, we make it look like um, other national championship teams. Um, because when you can win at home, when you can build a fan base, um, they provide the energy in the building. And, and sometimes they they can account for, you know, four or five wins just because they're there, they're loud, they're invested. And I can honestly say our, our fans are so invested in our program. You know, you, you see them, I mean, look, I mean, I, I, I'm sitting on the bench and I just look up in front of me and I kind of look behind me all the way up to the rafters. I mean, there are people sitting there. Those aren't my ideal seats if I go to an arena. And I don't even know if I would go sit up top, but our, <laughs> our fans, you know, came into this building and, you know, cheered from the very top. And, and that's what you have to create. You know, they, they came on the road. They gave up a weekend in March. The weather's breaking. Um, that's what you need, people who really are. Um, it's, it's a lifestyle. I mean, our, our fans are, you know, this isn't just a movement. It's a lifestyle. They've been doing this for, for years. They, you know, they want to know when our schedule is next year so they can take their days off, you know. So, I mean, it's, it's a very beautiful thing. So I think Vic and I have done that. Um, and that's why you see it's really um, directly um, correlated with the, the fans and our, and our connection with the fans and our success. We have one final question for Coach Staley. I think we're good. This concludes South Carolina's press conference. Congratulations, Coach. Appreciate it.